Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Reinvent the Legal Business, the case study series. Really delighted to, to have you back, and most particularly our guest today, Ben Gouldson, who is a director at Clifford Gouldson Lawyers and Bolter. And he's going to be chatting about Bolter today, which is um, a really exciting initiative, I think, Ben, but I'm going to leave all the excitement to come from you and not from me. So, Ben, so excited to hear about all that you're doing at Bolter. I, I just found like the whole kind of concept of what you're doing with that really, really interesting and really new and different and trailblazing and transforming and all of those sorts of things. Um, so no pressure, but now over <laughs> to you to tell us all about it and, and really delighted to have you here. Thanks, Terry. And uh, welcome, everybody, uh, whether you're watching live or whether this might be something that you watch later on. It's great to be with you. Um, it's Friday. And uh, what better way to spend a Friday than um, collaborating with others and getting to learn about their journey and see how you might be able to take that journey and plug it into your pathway moving forward. Uh, what I thought I'd do today um, was just take you through the Bolter uh, journey and explain to you um, where it came from and why it came to exist and what our experiences have been so far. Um, obviously, it's by no means <laughs> any suggestion by me that what we have done is perfect. Um, it's just our journey and I thought I'd share in that spirit. So moving through our slides, I've prepared some slides and um, from our perspective, it's a startup about startups. That's the first thing to note. It's about offering affordable and practical support to small businesses and startups. We're really determined to be client obsessed. We want to be very much in that online uh, space where we operate as digitally as we can. We need to be flexible in terms of meeting times because at the end of the day, the world is shifting and the old usual nine to five may not necessarily cut it, both from a perspective of what clients need, but also from a perspective of what employees working within Bolter might need um, now and in the future. Uh, we also want to develop this concept of 360 degree legal support. We don't want to be um, the attache or the, the place where you might go for a particular transaction. We want to become part of that support network where we're the trusted advisor. And um, I suppose it's the brainchild of Clifford Gilts and Lawyers, a, a, a team of staff, Simon Playford originally, along with the rest of us, um, developed the concept of um, a little startup boutique for startups uh, that's supported by the dedicated legal professionals within Clifford Gilts and Lawyers. So what are we going to talk about today? What's our agenda? We're going to talk about why Alta was created. We're going to talk about why it's uh, essential as to its integration with CG law. We're going to focus on the differences um, and identify the differences between the two. What is it that sets Bolter apart from CG law? What are the, the slight, subtle and not so slight and subtle differences between the two? We're going to talk about um, digital engagement and how we are experimenting and playing and uh, inventing and reinventing the way that we're engaging with our clients. We're going to talk about online documents and uh, a focus we have to really um, use technologies to enhance the experience of both our team and our clients and referrers in that space. And we're going to talk a little bit about workflow process just to share um, some of our experiences to date. So let's get started. Firstly, the why. Well, I suppose that probably needs us to go back to the beginning and look at um, 
where it all began in terms of Clifford Gultson. So Clifford Gultson Lawyers launched back in 2006, and we've been very blessed and fortunate to have a pretty good run since then. We started as uh, Danny Clifford, Ben Gultson, Clifford Gultson Lawyers, uh, with effectively one employee. Um, then we grew, and we've been very lucky in that time. I think we're now sort of nudging towards 50, and um, we're really proud of what we've achieved. We've always helped start up clients in that business, so there's no doubt that clients have come to us with a new business or a new venture, and we've always supported them. But what we noticed over time is that startup clients can be different, and the differences are uh, varied. It can be differences based on age. Um, it can be a difference based on the fact that they're working and they're trying to do something as a side hustle. They might be needing to take time off work to come and talk to us. That can create stress. But they also are very interested in connectivity to a community. And that's really ramped up the last years as the government, probably back to Malcolm Turnbull's time as Prime Minister, made some announcements around um, looking to really lift the funding that might be available for innovations, startup space type businesses. We then saw a lot of co-working spaces become created. We, we started to see angel investors. We saw television shows like the Shark Tank um, and equivalents overseas. So we've seen a real focus on community in that startup space that probably hasn't existed previously. We've identified that flexibility is really, really key, whether it be the hours when you're available to help them, whether that be around your pricing. And it's not just about fixed fee, uh, it's about flexibility as to the options that might exist for pricing um, and flexibility around delivery whether that be um, a change in style of delivery, not so much the long lengthy written advice or um, the butt covering concept that traditionally a law firm is focused on, um, or whether that be around the way the advice is delivered and there's a collaboration piece with the client around that service delivery. So what we observed, I guess, is the way a traditional law firm operates, it's not so easy to um, provide everything in the way a startup client might wish. And as a result of that, Bolter, Make It Happen, was born. We launched, I think it was in April 2020 straight after the COVID shutdowns were announced. And uh, we, we did talk about um, at the time as a management group within the Clifford Gilts and Lawyers business, um, we did talk about whether or not we proceed to launch because everything was ready, but we could have easily decided to defer. Uh, and we made the call that no, this is an even better time to launch because that shutdown may create um, more incentive for people to be thinking about side hustles or opportunities. There may be people out of work or stood down who um, needed precisely the sort of service offering that Bolter provides. And that's actually what we saw. I mean, I can think of a number of clients that were um, pilots or people who worked within the airline industry who had been stood down and suddenly had ideas Maybe they'd had those ideas for some time, but they'd never had the time to act upon those ideas. And uh, we were fortunate that they reached out to us to help them bring those ideas to fruition. So that's the why. Then just a little side note, we, we've been able through that digital platform to really be Australia wide. We've got clients that are in Broome, Western Australia, Darwin in the Northern Territory, Tassie, uh, Melbourne, um, Ballarat, 
so we really have been able to have a very wide um, access point. Let's move on to that second category, which is um, integration within CG law. So CG law is and always has been a boutique business focused law firm. We we haven't set about building a business that is your, 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 your everything firm. Uh, you know, we don't do criminal law. Um, we don't do family law. Um, so we're not the typical firm that might exist in a regional setting uh, where we are based in Toowoomba. We have a Toowoomba head office. We have a Brisbane and a Sunshine Coast office in Queensland. We have a visited Sydney and a visited Melbourne office. So we've got a wide reach and we can access those clients subject to COVID shutdowns. We're in the middle of another one in Melbourne now, as we all know. Um, but we still from that base have been able to win clients from all over Australia, including uh, some very large national clients. And we've also been able to win some clients that are overseas based clients, including some very large corporations or uh, multinationals that operate in Australia and elsewhere. And we're really proud of that. So we have these structured specialist teams. We have a workplace team, we have a property team, we have an intellectual property team, a litigation, a construction, and so on. And what that does is that enables us to um, access those specialist teams for Bolter's benefit and for the clients of Bolter's benefit. So we can provide a point of contact. Um, the Bolter clients can access a wide range of practice specialty um, seamlessly. And that's a real win-win from our point of view. So we've looked at the why, we've touched on uh, the integration with CG Law, and now we're going to look at the differences. So as, uh, as Simon used to say, essentially CG Law's annoying younger sibling. Uh, it looks up to CG Law, Bolter tries to get away with doing things a bit differently and ultimately will always need CG Law's help and support. But there's a real experiment and play mentality. And uh, as Harry, uh, one of our law clerks who works closely with us in the Bolter business often says, it's a really wonderful playground where you can trial different things. You can easily implement them because of that digital footprint and that digital focus. And then if it works, we might roll it out for CG Law. If it doesn't work, well, you try something else. And that experiment and play mentality, I think is a really important message for uh, you all and for us all. Well, another difference is that different brand. Obviously, Bolter, uh, you know, you might have a look at that logo on the bottom of the slide and have a think about what that means to you when you see it. Um, obviously, um, the most common sort of answer when that question's asked uh, relates to lightning in a bottle, and that's effectively what it's designed to generate as a thought concept, making it happen, action. So it's a bit edgy and non-traditional. Um, we wanted it to be simple, unique and memorable. And we hope that it is. There is a different style for Bolter. There's a slightly more relaxed or casual feel. We're really client obsessed, CG Law is too, but we really are taking that to the next level with Bolter. And there is a different client base. You know, some of our CG Law clients have been around longer than CG Law, and some of them, you know, ten times longer than CG Law. Um, obviously, the Bolter client base are these startup businesses, small businesses that may not necessarily have been around very long, and so there is a difference, and it's worth acknowledging that difference. There is also this demographic piece, mind you. I haven't, I haven't, um, I, I haven't been surprised, but I've also seen that the 
25 to 35 year olds who don't feel like they align with traditional law firms. They, there's a stuffiness they describe. There's an arrogance that they describe um, that's common. Um, or there's a perception of cost they can't afford. And that may be true, but it may not be. Uh, but I also observe in the Bolter experience since April last year that there's quite a lot of entrepreneurs and startups that are in the uh, more experienced demographic. Uh, certainly, we've had a handful that are even in the retiree demographic. And that's been really interesting because they're reaching out to the communities and they're seeking to connect. And uh, that's been fascinating to see and very enjoyable because you can learn so much from people who've walked shoes um, and paths for a long period of time. So that covers off on our differences. We've been through the why, we've talked about that CG law involvement and the interconnectivity. We've talked about the differences. Let's now look at that sort of digital engagement piece. I suppose that the most obvious one is that a traditional law firm exists in a physical presence, an office, signs. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a visual thing as people in that community might drive around, walk past. There might be a mention of the firm, the business at a business breakfast, a chamber of commerce event, a, um, an activity, a lunch, a dinner, a barbecue, and there might be some connection based on what was visually seen. Well, certainly for Bolter, that doesn't happen. There's no, there's no office with signage. There's no branding sitting physically in any location. Bolter effectively sits in cyberland um, and relies on uh, searches through different platforms, Google, Yahoo, Bingle, et cetera, and that digital engagement. So that's a very big point of difference between CG Law and Bolter. We are doing all that we can to continue to be a present and growing part of the startup community. And our recent uh, Lee, uh, inaugural uh, little giant startup grant uh, awards ceremony, which was where we handed uh, out an award to one business from hundreds of applicants, uh, $25,000 cash and $25,000 of legal services over the next 12 months. Um, that's about promoting the community, being part of the community. And uh, that was a really magical experience. And Toucan by Spur, our inaugural winner, um, a really wonderful organization doing some great work in the mental health within the workplace space. Um, you know, it was a real treat to be able to uh, announce them as the winner. And it was a real treat also to hear the pitches from the other uh, four finalists who came along on the night of our digital, digitally uh, hosted by Zoom uh, awards. So we are part of that community and we wanna to continue to grow and contribute to that community. All of our meetings, in fact, I can't even remember a single client meeting that I've had within Bolter that is face-to-face. -face. So I put on the slides here, it's rarely face-to-face, -face, but I actually can't, I can't recall doing a meeting that's been face-to-face. -face. They've all been by Teams or Zoom or FaceTime or just a phone call. Um, and uh, that's probably telling because in the reverse with CG Law, it's probably the case that the majority of new client meetings are face-to-face. -face. Adjusted through COVID, of course, but um, still there's a, there's a preference in that more traditional setting for face-to-face -face meetings. The other thing I think that's worth saying is um, the Instagram or the Twitter or the Facebook uh, content um, networks, they're extraordinary. And what also we're seeing is there's an interconnectivity between Bolter and its clients that doesn't really exist with the traditional law firm. The traditional law firm is very much 
we exist, clients come to us, we deliver their services, we are advocates for them to the extent we can and we want them to do well, but there's no public location uh, where there's a coexistence um, unless we were to seek it out, which you tend not to because you respect the confidentiality of the client. Um, what we're noticing in the Bolter space is a greater level of connectivity um, in these social media platforms where the clients are making comments about us and linking or tagging us. And equally, um, they're very uh, desirous and, and hopeful that we might uh, make comments about them and link and tag them. And that's an interesting experience as someone who's been in the industry for about 25 years. And I've seen the traditional from a very traditional stage when I started my, my career as an articled law clerk, signing an indenture of articles to do five years serving under a master, uh, to then finishing that coming through a firm that went through a lot of growth and then leaving to set up the, uh, Clifford Giltson with uh, Danny Clifford. And so I've seen a, a lot of shift and a lot of change, but that's an interesting one. And I thought I'd, I thought I'd share it today. The other thing I think that's worth um, just touching on briefly is the risks or the downsides of that. Because you are operating at a cutting edge, fast paced digital interface, it's pretty easy if you mess it up for there to be a negative public statement out there in that social media platform um, about your business. Now, that doesn't mean to say that. Um, that, that that will happen, just you need to be cautious of it and you need to be uh, very systemized and on your game and monitoring. So there's a cost that comes with that. There needs to be personnel. There needs to be resources dedicated to monitoring and responding and dealing with any concerns or any risk of concern. So you, 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 you can't just sort of open up, launch, and then it all happens. There's actually quite a lot of work. And so I would say that the big majority of what we were doing leading up to April last year, huge actually, a huge majority of what we were doing was building content, designing systems, developing platforms. So that by the time April came, we, we probably started June the year before. Um, yeah, I think it would have been June or July the year before. And we virtually dedicated uh, half of a full-time lawyer resource and part of marketing resource uh, of our employees within Clifford Gilts and Lawyers to build, design, create all of that. So that by the time we were ready to launch, that was ready to go. The systems, the procedures were in place. So don't underestimate the importance of planning and dedicating that time to get to that place so that you're ready. All right, so uh, why the interaction with CG Law, um, the digital uh, existence or platform? Um, let's now talk about the online documents. Now, what I thought we'd do is I thought we would see if I can do it, is just pull up the website. So um, I just thought we could have a little bit of a look um, at some of these um, things that we sort of designed, if you like. So what we've done is obviously typical law, typical law firm website in, in many respects, um, but we've tried to change the sort of jargon. We've tried to um, put a twist on how we shape up, interact with clients, so we talk about our squad and we're trying to talk about the squad because it breaks down the barrier that might otherwise exist. We talk about the client success team, the client support team. So we're, we're trying to focus on not just um, lawyer, solicitor, legal, director. And then when it comes to interacting, we want to make sure front and centre is this concept of participating in the community. So that's our little giant startup grant that I was talking about. And 
it was really important to bring in some external um, participants as judges to give credibility um, and independence around the decision making selections of finalists. And we've also, um, I think, tried to ensure that there's an interface through which people can access a lot of information. So we've developed the first strike blog and we've had a lot of content go out over a long period of time now, really touching on the different practice areas and visually as making it as interesting as we can. Again, not, not, not terribly different than what, what traditional law firms might do, but we're, we're trying to do it in a way that is broken down to really uh, grab moments and action takeaway steps so that people know what is that first right step that they need to take. We've developed um, obviously some legal documents and we probably don't have time to go through it today, but you can look at it in your own time, where we set out a number of packs that we have bundled things into a pack that we see always seem to show up together. And then we price it with some fixed fee certainty for people so that they can grab what they need and move on. The other thing we're doing, so we've created the Bolt Docs and the Bolter Packs. And the concept of both of those is to provide in time a platform through which there can be access to documents that are template documents, whether they're for free, whether they're for a low price point, but equally putting together the suites of documents that might be the most common in our experience. And we've got about 10 packs. And what we're finding with that is that there's a real value proposition for clients of Bolter. Now, I think in probably about half an hour down, so a little bit, a little bit more before we can sort of throw to questions. I thought I'd touch on workflows. Now, we, we as a firm use Lawmaster, that's our practice management software, and it's got a lot of sophisticated um, capability around merging of documents, grabbing data and dropping it in. But it's so sophisticated and it's very proprietary to Lawmaster that I, I didn't feel comfortable showing you that. Each practice management software would have similar features. And so my encouragement to anyone working in uh, a legal service function, whether it's a law firm, a community legal service, in-house counsel, my encouragement to everyone is shop and look for the best practice management software that you need to help support your function, your legal service function. Um, but what we've also found is through our Microsoft uh, licensing, there are quite a lot of fantastic uh, automation features that you can tap into as part of your license or with a, a nominal additional fee. And I thought I'd just describe some of those to you today because I think this is where the legal innovation um, really starts to kick off. So firstly, in terms of forms. So we are in that fortuitous position, I think now with Bolter, where we're able to send our clients um, an electronic digital access point for them to populate data. That data then comes back to us in an email, uh, in an Excel format, and then we are able to use that data really efficiently to streamline the processes that we do at the back end and stop repeat data entry over and over again, which typically is what occurs in a lot of businesses. And there are these reverse merge functions, which I'm no IT experts, so I can't really tell you about, but there are these reverse merge functions where data that might exist in that format can be automatically extracted, uploaded, and then used. And that's amazing. And it's, and it's exciting, the efficiencies that come with that. Uh, there's a feature that is Flow, which basically enables through the Microsoft um, platform uh, an automatic sharing of information that might come to members of a team who need that data. So we're able to receive information and have identified who else needs to see it. That means that you're not having to think when the data comes in, oh, who do I need to share this with? It's automatically going where it needs to go. 
there's lots of times in business in a law firm where one lawyer or one paralegal or secretary or reception, they're not at their desk and something comes in and you're waiting on them to come back before the information moves on. And we're finding this is really solving that delay. It might be an hour, it might be two, it might be a day because someone's on leave, it might be because they're sick. The person covering them just may have been too busy. So there's lots of time lost in that setting. There are these Microsoft Power Apps that you can use, which enable you to have some real metrics and, and analysis of data and timing of turnaround. There's automate features that you've got. So for example, um, when we are generating communications, there's an ability to automate the process. And if certain things occur, certain other things automatically occur. And so we're experimenting in Bolter and playing. And we've, we've started the process now of identifying three or four things that we really liked in Bolter. And we're going to now roll them out within the Clifford Gultzen lawyers business because they work so well. So we can send uh, a link to clients to make an appointment. We can lock down the calendar for certain times, but make it available for other times. Clients can then make their appointment to talk to their particular Bolter contact. That is automatically shared with the relevant team. So if the lawyer needs to know, if the secretary or paralegal needs to know, then that happens. That way there's coverage. Um, it can be by way of Teams. It can be by way of a phone appointment. It can be by way of a Zoom appointment. And you can imagine the time saving that allowing the client access for that booking frees up. Um, we send a single link for onboarding clients where we ask the clients all about their preferences. How do they want to receive their advice, email, phone call, letter? Phone, uh, uh, do they want to be reminded of things by SMS message or by WhatsApp message? Do they prefer to receive updates uh, by a quick little short SMS or WhatsApp message, or do they prefer to receive updates by an email or a phone call? All of these preferences, billing cycles, whether they need itemization, whether they don't, whether they prefer fixed fees, whether they actually don't prefer fixed fees. Some clients say they don't want fixed fee because they think they'll pay more than they need to. Other clients do want fixed fee. So all of those flexibilities that we talked about at the start of this presentation, we're um, covering off um, in the way that we are trying to engage with clients and the way that we're trying to interact internally to deliver for the client from a client-focused perspective. Now, obviously, uh, we aren't perfect. We know that there's lots of things out there we yet don't know and haven't perhaps discovered, and we'll keep exploring. Um, you know, we're a member of a number of different organisations with, with the purpose in mind of being exposed to new and innovative and different ways of doing things. Uh, we stay in touch uh, with, um, you know, Terry's organisation and uh, the College of Law and uh, ALPMA, the Australian Legal Practice Management Association. Um, we're monitoring what's going on at the Law Society, both in Queensland and in other states. And I'd encourage everyone to, I suppose, recognise that the way we are doing things now is not the best way we can do things. So we need to evolve, constantly innovate, trial and experiment, and listen to our clients and referrers to make sure that we're getting better all the time at what we do and how we do it. And uh, that brings us to um, questions. Love the Bolter story, Ben. What a fabulous story it is. I've certainly got some questions for you. And if um, folks have uh, others, please do, again, direct that to the, the Q&A section at the end of your screen. Um, ben, let me kick off by asking this of you, and, and you touched on this um, in the preceding discussion, but... You, it, you've almost created in some respects um, a business within a business or certainly a disruption uh, within a, within perhaps a more traditional shell. What do you see as like the key advantages? But I also want to ask you what have been the disadvantages, if there's any, 
um, of doing that because we, we know that this is a way that legal business models are evolving. Some, sometimes they're within, sometimes they're without, and uh, it's probably a bit of a mixture of both of those sometimes if bits are kind of uh, outsourced. But, you know, having been there and done that, yep. um, what, do you, what do you think about that? that? Yeah, I think it's a really good question, Terry. The, the reality is there are pros and cons. You, you are astute and you've, you've summed it up. The disadvantages are probably a risk of losing clients from the traditional firm yeah. to the exciting, vibrant, funky, new startup firm. That's a risk. That is a risk. And the reason I say that's a risk is because why did we start Bolter? It was for focusing on startups. But there are some other features of Bolter and its efficiencies uh, and its pricing that might also advantage Clifford Goulson clients from time to time. Yeah. You know, there, there is a risk. Now, you can either um, worry about that risk and not do it, or you can focus on the upside opportunity. And we've chosen to focus on the upside opportunity and the upside opportunities. I hope I've outlined uh, pretty clearly that there are so many upsides, it's not funny. Uh, but yeah, great question, and and there are risks. And um, the other thing is the pace at which legal service delivery has moved is phenomenal. And I know, Terry, you and I have talked about this before. Mm. Um, and the pace at which everyone's job everywhere is moving is phenomenal. Now, I suspect if if you asked the team that have worked across both the Bolter and the Clifford Gilts and Lawyer Businesses, they would probably say anecdotally the bolter pace is in some respects faster. Mm. And if you're not fast, you might lose the opportunity. Yeah. The pace at the Clifford Goulton side is more um, normal paced and existing referral relationships because the client is often known to you or at least very well known to the referrer. It's unlikely there'll be a failure to convert, but there is a risk with bolter partly also because of what we've called it. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it does send a, a connotation of speed and jolt. Um, so that's, a, that, that's, a, that's my answer to your question. I hope it, I hope it helps. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I was thinking as you're saying that, you know, on the one hand, um, yes, you may lose um, folks from, you know, the CG law part and they go to Bolter, but, but then you may not have retained them anywhere at all had they not had the Bolter option to go to. Exactly right. right. Good good observation. And there yeah. is that piece around the Bolter client might outgrow Bolter and come to CG Law. Yeah, exactly. So so there's lots of scenarios that I can think of in the past, you know, 12 months or so where clients have bought a little bit of us of what we offer with Bolter and then they've come back to us with an issue which is beyond Bolter's capability. And we've said, okay, you need to talk to someone over at CG Law. And it's a very seamless handover because, you know, all of our documents, we're the same legal corporation. So all of our documents for Bolter have CG Law trading yeah. proprietary limited. That's our company. Yeah. So in many respects, there's no, it's not, it's not, it's not hidden. It, it, you can see it on the slide in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in many respects, and it's our clients who really called us CG Law. We were Clifford Goulton and then our clients affectionately started to call us CG Law, CG Law. Um, and then we incorporated once we could back in 2010 and, and on the journey has gone. So it's really interesting. Yeah. I, I wanted to pick up on something that you just said and something you said earlier, and, and that was the bit about um, the, the age, I guess, of entrepreneurs. And it's, it was really interesting for me. But we, you know, see a few times now mention of the fact that, in fact, the vast majority of entrepreneurs are 40 and older. Absolutely. And I think we often, we, we, we don't, you know, that's not the interpretation that a lot of people place on that. But, but given that and, and, and what you were just saying, perfect segue actually to this question, um, I am wondering whether, you know, those opportunities, of, I'm going to call it cross-selling yes. between Bolter and CG Law, particularly in that age group where there may be um, kind of a maturity of thought around, and by that I mean just simply more careers leading up to the side hustle yes. um, were that becomes the startup, that that that, that really happens and, and 
if you foresee that happening more, that kind of cross-selling between the two entities. I, I kind of hesitate to say that, but you know what I mean when I yeah, say Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, and look, it has and will continue to. I had an example uh, Tuesday this week. There was a client that I've done work for within the Bolter setting who is probably 27 yeah. um, and he asked a question of me for the benefit of his mum and dad. And the reality is that is now a referral to CG Law because Bolter doesn't offer that particular service. And so across it goes, it's been seamless and uh, and he is very happy, his, 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 his dad is very happy that that opportunity exists through a connection of an experience. And so long as you um, do the right thing, show up with good intent, have the skill set and don't pretend that you can do what you can't, generally those experiences all go very well. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to ask you another question now and it's, it's, it's a business evolution question, okay? So I'm going to give it a name before I ask it and, and it's this. Is there a possibility do you think that what's happening in Volta becomes um, just, it, it, it kind of expands and it actually flows into now the way that CG law practices generally so that Volta almost becomes a practice area of that larger transformed entity Um or is that looking kind of too far ahead? So it's kind of like almost that you would, the possibility of taking all of the stuff that you're learning through yeah. this experiment, right? Um, and I want to talk more about experiments in a sec as well. But it, it, it's now backflowed into CG law, but in a way that it's transformed all of the sum, the sum of all parts. Mm, that's a really interesting question. I actually don't know the answer to that, but but if you asked me, could I rule that possibility out? The answer is no. Mm. Um, and if you ask me to reflect upon the experiences of the last 12 months in COVID, where other than urgent will appointments and really, really urgent circumstances where there was no digital capability, um, where we didn't have clients coming in, like we just couldn't, you know, you just couldn't yeah. and you, and you got by and, and I'm now having, I reckon every week I have a talk with a firm who's no longer going to have a permanent staff presence yep. at an office. They're going to have a, a location where they've got interview rooms that they can access when they need to have appointments or where they can bring the team for a huddle or a team meeting but even that's rare. You generally do it in a Zoom or, or Teams or Citrix platform. Um, but I think that's a really good uh, possibility, Terry, that I couldn't rule out. Yeah, yeah. Because you see it sometimes going kind of the other way. Mm. Rather than having kind of a, a separate kind of disruptive entity, it's been set up as a as a practice group. Yes. Area within, I guess, um, particularly the large firm format. Yes. Um, and, and what's kind of coming out of that, which I can also potentially see for you folks, are um, different opportunities, you know, different sorts of revenue streams, even mm. in addition to or combined with what you're doing now. So it, it, it's just, a, to me, it's just a really interesting dynamic of it how is. it's combining and recombining yeah. in different ways. But I think you're right. And I think that the, the, the golden rule is, you shouldn't rule anything out. Yeah. You should always keep your mind open to the possibilities. That's the golden rule, isn't it? I mean, who would yeah, have thought? Yeah. I think I think it was Gilbert Tobin that invested in legal vision. I think yeah. that's my memory of it. Yeah, that's right. So a Sydney uh, founded firm, grown rapidly over the time mm -hmm. since Danny Gilbert founded it. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember going and hearing him and the legal vision tech officer speak at one of the, you know, tech conferences in Sydney a few years back pre-COVID. Um, and I remember hearing the description of why by him. Mm. And, I, and I'd be surprised now if uh, the legal vision revenue for Gilbert Tobin isn't approaching, you know, something close to the turnover of the Gilbert Tobin revenue. Now, I might be wrong. I don't know. I haven't looked. But um, the question then becomes, 
what does Gilbert Tobin do? Whereas it was probably designed to be a feeder to Gilbert Tobin, other than litigation, maybe now there's a preference that legal vision does everything else because of its systems being so efficient at doing it hmm. that the margins might be better than in Gilbert Tobin. Now, I don't know, but I but I, I postulate that might be the case. Yeah, and I think I think it's kind of it's it's opening up for us, um, and particularly in Queensland and other states, I guess, where this or other countries for that matter, where this is possible, um, a whole new opportunity around the idea of multidisciplinary practices. Mm. Um, in a way that I think we um, haven't been able to think about it before, but that we are we now are. But it but it also leads me to the other point that I want to ask you, and that is this. You spoke about experimentation. We love that word, not surprisingly, at the Centre for Legal <laughs> Innovation. Um, but, um, you know, it, it just seems that it's so critical to have something. You know, in your case, it's Bolter. I guess it might be uh, an, an innovation initiative or, or a committee or something like that, mm. but just something that is forward-looking at yes. the moment in terms of our profession. I mean, how important has that particular aspect been for you as you, know, you, you as the collective yes. um, as Bolter? Yeah, yeah I think um, we're very lucky that since we started in 2006, I think we've had... Um, an open mindset. And so even before Bolter existed, uh, I think it's true to say that that Danny and myself, Amanda Tolson, who then became the third owner of the business, uh, Selena Allgate, our practice manager, John Gray, our sort of non-executive um, marketer who sits, sits on our board effectively. Um, we've always been exploring better ways more efficient ways, more client-friendly ways. So I think we've been lucky that it's sort of been in our DNA. Yeah. But it's very interesting as I um, move around the state and interact more and more, as, as you become more experienced as a legal practitioner, you, you become more uh, a person who might be asked questions of, well, how, what do you do? How do you do that? So as, as owners of other law firms, whether they're sole practitioners or small to medium enterprises, and even talking to some partners I know at some of the very large firms, um, it's very interesting when you're hearing them talk about their processes. Um, it, it's amazing how many just do what they were taught. Yeah. And don't necessarily even think about the possibility that there might be other ways of doing things. They're really reliant upon people coming into their business with other experiences who say, you know what, I've done this elsewhere this way. Have we thought about that? And a lot of people aren't game to make those suggestions. Yeah. So unless there's an embedded process, unless you're lucky where it's sort of in the DNA, unless there's an embedded formal way in which you go about doing that, or there's this sort of startup division or concept, I don't think it would happen easily. And I think that's a real loss to those businesses. Or, as I say before, legal service delivery units, whatever they may be, yeah. in-house council, community legal centres, you know, they're all doing the same thing, aren't they, in a different way? Yeah, and, it, and it, it's, again, a perfect segue into the, to the, to the last question that I wanted to ask you, which is about that process of taking what you're learning in Bolter and bringing it in to CG Law because it's, it's a process of a change and innovation, I guess. Yeah, it is. And, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it seems to me that, of course, it's multifaceted, but it's, it's that bit where a lot of firms struggle. Whether 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 the suggestion is coming from someone with within, assuming mm. there's an environment, as you as you mentioned, that encourages it, or it's a vision that the person has as well, um, it just doesn't happen. It, it, it some somewhere it gets stuck. Yes. I'm just really curious about that because it's obviously something you've thought about. You're doing. Mm. Mm. Um, how do you do it? Yeah, so the practical way of doing it is that you identify what you think works well 
and then you must go to the mothership, if you like, <laughs> and and you must think carefully about getting feedback, show, demonstrate, explain the benefits and what we've, what we've seen that works, and then you might trial it. So you might pick the right team or division or person and you might trial it and check that you're right that there are some efficiencies or some improvements or client improvements and then you might trial it again and then what you're doing is you're you know the usual thing thrust it upon someone and the fact of change being negative means the likelihood of success is diminished involve the person in the possibility of improvement make it part of something they own and then the prospect of it being rolled out is enhanced significantly so that's effectively what we do and we're in the middle of doing that a couple of with a couple of things now from Bolta right right at this very minute so that's why I can describe that to you because that's effectively what we've done yeah and I guess it 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 kind of creates a certain comfort level around things evolving versus it all happening at once where it becomes a little bit overwhelming. Yes, yes. And yeah. and you're right, Terry. I mean, you, 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 you'd have seen this many times in your career, but also um, we've all heard the stories, haven't we, where the, the change is so great that no matter how good it is, it's stifling. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it, it gets blocked, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, it needs to be incremental wherever possible um, so that people can sort of feel like they're able to adjust as it's as it's launched or as it's implemented yeah absolutely and and refined I mean yeah you've seen you've seen and had many discussions with lots and lots of different um, law firms but also individuals who might be working within those law firms and it's a finely balanced um, tool that you need to use or tools to make sure you're navigating that path and we by no means get it right but I, I hope that by focusing on knowing that we haven't got it right we're thinking before we just dive in yeah yeah absolutely Ben um just a fantastic discussion really really grateful and and also um really grateful that you um you know frankly were so candid and and um, upfront about what's worked and what hasn't, because I think you know there's so much opportunity to certainly to learn from success, but you know sometimes probably learn even more from failure. So it, it's so important to kind of be able to canvas both. Um, Absolutely, and and I'm just a bit, we're all a big believer here in this abundance yeah. uh, mentality. There's plenty of work. There's plenty of opportunity. Um, you needn't you know keep stuff under lock and key unnecessarily. At the end of the day. If you're doing the right thing with good intent, it probably will come your way. Yeah. So have some faith and uh, do the hard work, put in the hard yards, but no harm in sharing because, um, you know, there's a, it's, it's a very big economy with lots of clients and massive opportunity. Oh, absolutely. And, and just love that you folks are investing back in that community as well. I mean, I congratulations on that. I mean, I think it's just absolutely amazing. Thank you, Terry. Um, Thank you again for joining us. Thank you, everyone uh, here today for joining us as well. Um, don't forget to come back and learn more about these fabulous stories and examples of how legal practice is being reinvented. That's what the series is about, and we've just been delighted uh, to showcase yet another brilliant example of that. Um, don't forget to follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook as well if you want to get up-to-date info about a whole bunch of stuff that's happening at the centre. Again, uh, Ben, absolutely delighted to have you here. Thank you again so much for your time today. It's a pleasure. Thanks for inviting me along, Terry, and uh, let's go and reinvent Ed. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bye. Bye, everyone. Take, take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.